Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another commentary done by Diggity. This is BSL 17 quarterfinals, 12 o'clock location. We have top speed, aka Zazu. He's going up against Head Jack in the bottom right hand corner. As the so we got midnight blue and peach. I cannot adjust that. That would be double yellow, which would be even crazier than usual. This is on apocalypse. And it is an apocalypse indeed, because these are two Polish Zerg in the long line of incredible Polish Zerg out there. Zero himself. Polish Zerg. And you can see there's chatter between them, most likely good friends. Poland really keeps the scene up and running. You've got Bonneth, who's been the back-to-back-to-back-to-back. -to -back -to -back. He's just won so many BSL championships. And really has, I think, so arguably people are saying that DeWalt is the top out there, but Bonneth, as far as victories, just flat-out victories, has scored more recently. I won't spoil the BSL 17 finals, in case you have not already caught them. But, uh... In the meantime, we got these two guys. Should be an interesting one. I'm wondering if because of the the alignment of the patches to the north, if they mine a little bit more efficiently, because it looks like Zazu going to end up with that spawning pool down. Maybe it could also be the typing that happened between them. Going to end up with that spawning pool down. Fear the rap oh, never mind. It was an Overlord build. Derp! All right. So Overlord opener here from Hajak. He's going to go for... We'll see if it's an overpool or if he's going to straight up go for the 12 hatchery or 11 hatchery. It looks like he possibly, yeah, saved up some minerals. So a little bit of a gap, but we do have gas alongside. Now that doesn't mean that Zazu is necessarily, so oftentimes what they say is later this. So here's how it works in ZVZ. The later the spawning pool, the stronger your economy. So you end up with an economic lead, but the faster your gas, oftentimes the faster you get to layer. And sometimes what that means is you just end up with too many mutalisks to contend with, depending on early game damages that go the opposite direction. So just because it was a quick pool opener, and just because we've got 12 pool, which is to a degree uh, what people would consider soft counter, doesn't mean the game's over. They still have to play it out from here. But for the moment, Hedjek has that drone advantage. Should be able, let's see if he, he does need to do his due diligence and produce some zerglings in order to counter his opponent. It looks like an Overlord is going to end up in his base, which will be a sizable advantage. We got two Zerglings being constructed. He's still going to have some time to build some additional Zerglings. That natural expansion is also going to come up much earlier. So Zazu has to abuse. It looks like we do have the full grouping of Zerglings. Wisely so. We do also have Zergling speed being upgraded before Lair, which is going to delay Lair tech a bit, which is one potential advantage. So basically the advantage goes to Zazu, in a couple seconds, not a huge amount, but some enough time where it can be a considerable win game condition where the Zerglings will just be faster, they'll behave better. Keep in mind against a lot of, especially a rampless map like this where there's a lot of territory to run around, that could spell advantage. But we do have an Overlord that's catching these Zerglings as they're making the way out, which lets Hedjek know the opener. You can see him pausing the drones at the natural expansion, waiting for the engagement. The Zerglings engaging around the external surface area but speed is finished you can see they're trying to abuse that speed and get around but more reinforcements moving up currently it looks like hedgick is in fact defending we got two drones however the line two zerglings remaining so let's see if that drone that drone advantage holds we also have more zerglings making their way down two additional zerglings have been produced the four zerglings that have now grouped up running free between both locations a tech to layer both directions but the layer up much more rapidly for zazu a drone goes down that actually evens up the drone count, but there's a lot more gas in the bank for Zazu overall. Keep in mind, he is down a hatchery, but he this hatchery hasn't done anything for Hedgick as of yet. The Overlord also going to be see, uh, able to see spot the exact amount of Zerglings that are being produced, at least to the main hatchery. They don't have eyes on the natural expansion. Zazu dropping that Spire, which puts him down a drone, but that's going to allow him to leverage into Spire Tech all the more rapidly. Zazu hiding some Zerglings to the north, which would punish Hedgick if he dedicates all of his Zerglings to the main. And it looks like that is, in fact, what he's doing. So he's going to have to rely on reinforcing Zerglings or drones to potentially defend themselves. The Zerglings moving out to mid-map. They are going to engage. Zergling speed is there both directions. It looks like there's a slightly larger army. But if Hedgick can dive into this, a something colony being built, if he can dive into this, he can force Larva to be spent on Zerglings rather than Mutalisks, potentially, as the Spire is out there. A single Zergling gets tapped. The Zerglings have moved in the natural expansion and taken out a drone. Trying to work on a second drone already. We do have some additional Zerglings being built, but it's going to be a minute. Now, Hedgick losing mining time. 
did manage to pick off a Zergling. The drone's doing a good job defending themselves, but this is also time that's minerals not in the bank, which allows Zazu to continue to get that time and also potentially build that larva count. Hedgek not out of it yet. Two more Zerglings now moving. We don't have any additional Zerglings out in open field. Spire is up. We have the initial Mutalisks being built. Keep in mind, Zerglings do not attack air, so this could be a devastating situation. We have the layer up on the opposite end, but now does Hedgek fold back to Evolution Chamber? He is dropping an Evolution Chamber. Zerglings engaging on Zerglings. Zazu forcing the engagement to try to thin the herd to open up opportunity. A few of the Zerglings try to peel out, but engaging some reinforcements and getting surrounded, and that's going to leave 10 Zerglings out in the field that could swarm the Sutton Colony, but the Mutalisk is in fact there. So now the Zerglings here just trying to buy time to get the evolution chambers in place, but with that gas down, that's a lot of time. That actually could even things up just straight, just heads up. Because with that gas down, that means Zazu cannot expend any additional. He's got to start mining gas again to get the mutalisks out, which was his advantage, which buys more time for Hedgek to potentially get additional creep colonies up. The Overlord getting picked off, which is allowing these spore colonies to complete. Hedgek was a little bit behind on this. He's got two there. He's got one in the main. It looks like it's picking away at that Overlord. If that, we're going to keep an eye on that Overlord to see whether it gets picked off. One of the Mutal is taking damage. The Overlord, in fact, did die. And that is a huge swing at events because now Zazu is now supply capped. He's got two damaged Mutalists, and he's just now having to recap that gas, which is going to allow Hedgek to go ahead and get his own Spire up potentially and get some time to catch things up. So he's got this natural expansion running he's got the economic lead he's got some spy uh, the spire sorry spire the spores to defend so he can and he's got the overlords holding so what he can do is, is he can buy some time you have that hatchery dropping because this is oh the zerglings actually slipping through with the mutalis that's actually going to draw some zerglings into no man's land nice play both directions and they weren't split so the drone's going to have to defend themselves the Mulus doing a great job of splitting both locations using the surf. Oh, and able to pick off an additional drone. Every little bit matters. The Zerglings actually marching out, recognizing the Mulusks are covering no man's land, and they might be able to pick off that hatchery in open space. We have a few additional Zerglings being built, but that will force the Mulusks back. It looks like Zazu recognized his air in positioning. He's going to draw all the way back. Now does Hedgek... Yeah, it looks like he's going to focus on this hatchery, try to get as much damage there as possible. The Mutal is grouping up. The Zerglings now going to retreat. Are they going to try to pick down that extractor once again? Zerglings coming to try to assist. But behind this, Hedgek is going ahead and macroing up. He's got a sizable economic lead if he can get just get that Spire up and equalize the Mutalist count. So right now, Zazu with this... Oh, and additional Zerglings folding forward. About half the damage done on the hatchery right this second. So some attacking both directions. These Zerglings going ahead and retreating. It looks like these might just get sacked and try to keep an eye on things otherwise. Spire dropping right alongside that Spore Colony. So, it, Although this is a precarious location, that means Hedgek is in fact going to have to defend this against potential Zergling all-ins and Mutalist groupings. If that gets picked off, that could be a big swing around moment for Zazu. It could be that Hedgek is anticipating that and is trying to encourage that behavior to end up with a, a sort of some sort of trade maneuver. But we've got 500 resources in the bank, plenty of larvae to work with, and that's going to be an instant five mutalisks to potentially to catch up to the six. We also have plus one armor being upgraded. On top of that, Hedgek recognizing he's going to need a little bit of additional defense to try to equalize things. But the Zerglings moving forward, and again, that Spire is somewhat vulnerable. It looks like Zazu just going to skip it. He's able to pick off yet another drone. The Zerglings trying to move in. The mutalisks once again able to pick off the Zerglings in no man's land. The additional mutalisks have not spawned anywhere in between, but the Spore able to get some damage. The Mule's now there to help defend the natural expansion. Still a sizable economic lead for Hedgek to try to catch up and close the air gap. Which sounds like a air gap. That sounds like a new store that should be produced by Nike alongside with everything else. Trying to work on that evolution chamber. I don't know that that would be that big win, but that can soften up the Spore colony and even start hitting some of the eggs. It looks like the Mutalisk... So we got five Mules moving out versus a week and six to try to force these Mutalisks away to buy Hedgek some defensive time. Right now, he does have the supply lead. Ooh, gonna, ooh, able to pick one off. That's going to even things up, but we do have Scourge incoming. It's causing Hedgek to retreat. He was able to pick one off. Another Mutalisk moving up to reinforce, and this could be the game shift moment here between the two. It looks like it is going to be very, very close. It looks like the focus fire was better on Zazu's part, so he is going to end up with three Mutalisks remaining, but 
One of the oh, two of them are very, very weakened. We already have two additional Mulos that are on the ground. So with that, Hedgek looks like he was able to ship things out. But we have an Overlord in open field. The Mulos is going to press forward to go ahead and defend it. And they're also going to be able to pick one off. A split of Mulos now. And all of a sudden, Hedgek with the air lead. And that might be the death now. They're going to be able to go ahead and pick off Overlord's midfield. We, have, we did have a surge in drones behind this. Another Mules being taken out in midfield, but it doesn't look like it's going to be sufficient. With plus one armor nearly complete, Hedgek may have sealed the fate here, dropping a third hatchery in base to try to have available larva to continue production since he's got a sizable economic lead. We have another five Mutalisks out versus six, but keep in mind that armor, that plus one armor is going to finish in not too long. We also have some additional Scourge be between this. A Zergling just scooting out. Going to go ahead and check whether a third went up in the meantime. That would have been one of the opportunities for Zazu to catch things up. Finds that the third is not in place, recognizes, it, recognizes that it was just an attempt to rebuild the army. And is Hedgek going to press forward? Here's the thing, he doesn't need to. He knows he's in a superior position, but is he going to press that advantage? So starting to move out as that plus one armor finishes, some Scourge skirting in between. They might suicide into an Overlord to try to force a supply cap, but really what they want to hit is these Mutalisks in open space. Right now, no vision on either side. I believe they're superior Mutalisks. Yeah, it looks like one Mutalisk up right this second and a few additional Scourge for Zazu. But I do believe that plus one armor negates that single Mutalisk deficit. Another creep colony getting dropped. Yeah, Hedgek recognizing he's in the superior position that his opponent has to come to him. So Hedgek instead defending, allowing his opponent to try to force the battle. And he's going to go ahead and wander out a drone to go ahead and try to grab his third. And this is actually huge. If he can get that down and get it as a decent amount of health, some Scourger spotting it. We do have that Zergling that's on patrol top left. Problem for Zazu, if he muses, if he draws some Mutalisks to take care of that Zergling, that could provoke Hedgek to go for a counterattack. <clears throat> Plus one weapons on the way, by the way, for Zazu. I'm actually, I do not, so I, I believe plus one weapons because of the glaive. Don't quote me on this, but I believe because of the glaive, it might actually end up negating to a degree the armor. I don't know if any math has been done on that. Don't quote me on that. This is something to ask your Zerg professionals like Erbmon, like Hawk. In fact, I, I need to make a note to ask that down the line. This is okay, plus one weapons versus plus one armor. Mutalisks, does that end up negating because of the glaive uh, bounce advantage? But that's going to play a factor. We might see here momentarily. Right now, Hedgek still building on that economic lead, dropping a Sutton Colony, recognizing he has a little bit to spare. Some Zerglings working on that hatchery to the top right. That is going to force the mules to the mid-map. Hedgek getting caught a little bit out of position. And that hatchery down at half health, now re-engaging. He might have wanted to just check whether it was plus one or not. And it, it looks like Zazu going to have the better of it, but it's a closer reinforcement point. Is he going to get there in time to save the hatchery? That's going to be a down 300 resources. I don't know that it's going to matter. So the hatchery's gone, but the air fleet is also gone for Zazu, and that there's a formidable amount. The Zerglings trying to suicide in. There's plenty of Zerglings in the opposite side, and I'm going to assume... So let's see if Zazu, because it's a tournament situation, forces the, the issue, but that should be GG. Hedgek just needs to attack on multiple fronts. There isn't enough I don't believe there's enough as long as there's constant reinforcement. There's some overlords that should get picked off. They're not going to be able to defend at all places. And on top of it, plus two armor just about to complete. So Hedgek now picking away at the overlords, inviting that army of Zazu forward. And some nice micro. Looks like he's going to back off. He is down a Mutalisk. But Zergling's also stacking up. Unfortunately, they're, they're waiting. Okay, now they're engaging. So while the Mutalisks... Are grouped up here. It looks like that battle actually Hedgek wasn't microwing for a half second there. So it's a reverse wipe. What happened? But the Zerglings now scattering. They've taken out the hatchery in between and I don't know that these Mutalists are going to be able to punch through the reinforcements and three hatcheries worth of production. So the Zerglings have managed to, to halt the gas production. They're working on the spawning pool. It looks like they are. They gonna, it's going to be close. Six health. Six health remains on that spawning pool. But the damage are there. There's, 
Uh, is the circling going to get there? Not quite. But the gas is still down, which is enormous right now because there was already that sizable economic lead. Another third hatchery getting dropped and the mutilus count has immediately refilled off these three hatcheries. So superior amount of larvae, superior amount of gas and Hedgic, I believe has won it at this stage. We got one more attack moving forward. A few Zerglings getting picked off. But honestly, this is maybe just a posturing maneuver for Zazu. He's trying to sneak a hatchery at the nine o'clock location. He is going to dive into the main. Might get an... Oh, manages to get an Overlord to force a supply gap or something. But we have more Zerglings marching their way across. They're not going to find anything at the natural expansion. A Spore Colony also joining this. So that's going to be another reset Air Force. As plus two weapons is finished. And Zazu recognizes it. So an intense game one. But it goes to Hedgic. Overall, hope you guys enjoyed it. That was a exciting one. Thank you for listening.